We're proud to be a vital part of the connections that make Newfoundland, Labrador, and Nova Scotia the best they can be. From the hundreds of thousands of people who have safely made the crossing to over 91,000 commercial units transported to and from Newfoundland and Labrador this year. It's these connections that help us build a strong sense of community, coming together for support in good times and in bad. We couldn't have gotten through this year and all the challenges and opportunities it has brought without the hard work of our amazing staff. Let's look back in gratitude for the year gone by and forward with anticipation of what's to come. Marine Atlantic would like to respectfully acknowledge that we operate in Mi'kma'kwi, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq peoples, and on the island of Uk'namkuk, the unceded traditional territory of the Biathic and the Mi'kmaq peoples. We also acknowledge Labrador as the traditional and ancestral homelands of the Innu of Natasanan, the Inuit of Nunatsiavut, and the Inuit of Nunatukavut. Good day, and thank you for joining us or Corporation's Annual Review of Activities for the period April 1st, 2021 to March 31st, 2022. My name is Gary O'Brien. I am the Chair of Marine Atlantic's Board of Directors. Today's meeting is being live streamed via our website and YouTube channels, and I welcome everyone who has joined us today. It is also being simultaneously translated and presented in both French and English. For those that would like to submit a question to be answered at the end of our meeting, please follow the link and instructions on our website. Joining me today are Murray Hutman, President and CEO, and Sean Lehman, Vice President of Finance. I would like to acknowledge my board of director colleagues for their ongoing commitment and dedication to our service. I would also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge our former longtime board member, Jim Duty, who finished serving his term during the year. Before I go any further in today's presentation, I want to say that our thoughts and support are with the people of Cape Breton and the southwest coast of Newfoundland as recovery efforts continue from Hurricane Fiona. Our corporation is standing shoulder to shoulder with our colleagues, families, and friends, and neighbors in the recovery effort. Our region and communities have demonstrated time and time again the ability to overcome tragedy and disaster. By working together, we will rebuild from this devastating situation as well. It's been a tough couple of years for everyone. This storm, combined with COVID-19 and last fall's highway washouts on the southwest coast of Newfoundland has generated extra stress and tested the resilience of the Marine Atlantic Service. I am extremely proud of the team at Marine Atlantic, the many frontline employees who kept our operations in service during very challenging times. Our, our team focused their efforts on ensuring a strong supply chain and enabling the economy as a vital piece of the national transportation infrastructure. We've maintained our focus on safety, diversity, inclusion, and accessibility through various investments, programs, and initiatives. We have implemented new innovative ways of doing business through enhanced technologies. And we have implemented initial actions towards our goal of net zero emissions by 2050. From an infrastructure perspective, we selected a partner to supply a new vessel for our service. We began initial work on our new administration building to be constructed in the town of Channel Port of Basque. And we continue our efforts to make navigational improvements to the Port of Basque Harbor. I would like to thank the Government of Canada for their ongoing partnership and collaboration as we work together to further our projects, policies, and initiatives that benefit all Canadians. We live in challenging times. Not only are we emerging from a pandemic that has influenced all our daily routines for the past couple of years, but we are also adjusting to our changing climate. Last year's highway washouts and Hurricane Fiona are demonstrating 
the power of nature and how we must adapt. Through our environmental commitments and innovation, innovative ways of doing business and conducting our service, we're looking at ways to minimize our impact while servicing customers in our new and changing reality. It is through cooperation, partnership, and engagement that we will continue to be successful. We will continue to be agile and make decisions that are in the best interests of customers and the sustainability of our service. I would now like to invite our president and CEO, Murray Hupman, to provide a presentation highlighting some of our initiatives and achievements during the past fiscal year. Thank you, Gary. I would like to echo your comments and offer my thoughts of support to those impacted by Hurricane Fiona. Many of our employees on both sides of the Gulf were directly impacted by this disaster. We are working to help those needing assistance through donations to the Canadian Red Cross and the Salvation Army, as well as working directly with employees who need our support. Although the storm has passed, the recovery efforts will take many months. Today, we'll take some time to share key highlights from fiscal 21-22 including specific achievements and initiatives that happen across the company. It hasn't been an easy year, and yet we have a lot to be proud of. I will begin this morning with a short overview for those individuals who may not be familiar with our organization. Marine Atlantic provides an essential, constitutionally mandated ferry transportation link between Newfoundland and Labrador and Nova Scotia. We provide the only daily ferry service connecting the island of Newfoundland to Nova Scotia and transport hundreds of thousands of vehicles and passengers each year, as well as many of the goods that are used and consumed in Newfoundland and Labrador each day. Therefore, we are both a commercial freight and passenger transportation service. The service is provided with our four ICE class vessels namely the MV Leif Erikson, MV Blue Petis, MV Highlanders, and MV Atlantic Vision. Marine Atlantic is a federal crown corporation reporting to the Minister of Transport and receives annual operating subsidies to deliver the service. Today's overview of activities covers the period April of 2021 to March of 2022. These highlights represent the second year of the COVID-19 pandemic. Due to the pandemic, we witnessed significant drops in passenger volumes, which negatively impacted our revenues and influenced many of our operating decisions. However, we did experience a rebound in traffic, especially during the summer period. For the 21-22 fiscal year, we transported approximately 232,000 passengers 92,000 passenger vehicles, and 91,000 commercial vehicles. The biggest difference from the prior year was a significant increase in passenger traffic. We carried approximately 100,000 more passengers. As I noted, this review of activities focuses on the year ending March 2022. As the year ended, we witnessed a significant increase in reservations for this summer. This trend continued through the spring and summer periods, providing a much needed boost for our service in the regional tourism sector. As always, safety remains our highest priority at Marine Atlantic. Through safety and security measures, our efforts are designed to protect people, infrastructure, and the community and ecosystem in which we live and work every single day. During the pandemic, the health and safety of employees and customers remained our top priority and a key element to maintaining the essential ferry service. Working with public health authorities in both provinces, we developed measures that worked well to mitigate against the spread of COVID-19 allowing us to remain in service throughout the pandemic. 
Central to our success during the year was our workforce, who have remained steadfast in their commitment to serving our customers in a safe and healthy manner. Our goal is to provide employees with a safe, healthy environment that enables them to grow and thrive in their careers. Our training activities continue throughout the year. Our programs are designed to strengthen the skills of today's employees and grow our leaders of tomorrow. During the year, we launched our new learning management system. We also implemented a new workplace harassment and violence policy that aligns with the Government of Canada's Bill C-65. It provides for workplace assessments, preventative measures, and implementation plans, all to achieve a safe and inclusive workplace where employees feel valued and respected. Work continued towards the establishment of a psychological health and safety program. We are using nationally recognized evidence-based programs to design our program to assist all members of our workforce in dealing with difficult challenges. Our Marine Atlantic branded My Health Wellness program focused on improving health and wellness outcomes by providing employees with enhanced access to medical professionals, support programs, and activities to sustain healthy behaviors that will improve physical, mental, and emotional well-being. We understand that our team will perform its best if we provide a diverse and inclusive environment. That is why we are continuing to place a priority on equity, diversity, inclusion, and accessibility as key elements of our business plan as we move forward. During the year, we undertook new initiatives to continue to move forward on this front. We established a pay equity committee to review and evaluate roles traditionally held by women and address any gender-based inequities in pay practices. We recognize the critical importance of reconciliation with our Indigenous peoples and are committed to implementing the calls to action of Canada's Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Our actions during the year included education and training, understanding and promoting the heritage, beliefs, and cultures of Indigenous peoples, and better reflecting those contributions within Marine Atlantic. Having an accessible ferry service for our customers and employees has been a long-standing priority for our team at Marine Atlantic. Working with our Accessibility and Inclusion Advisory Committee and using their experiences we continue internal education activities and commitment to best practice accessibility approaches. The marine environment can at times be very tough to operate in. We are continuing to experience more intense storm systems. Our teams continue to work with external organizations to better predict and assess approaching weather systems, make sound operational decisions that keep safety and customer experience at the forefront. As part of our driving mission, Marine Atlantic is committed to implementing initiatives that will enable us to achieve net zero emissions by 2050. As a member of the Green Marine Environmental Certification Program, we are focusing on continued improvement. We currently hold a level three certification targeting environmental issues such as greenhouse gases, community impacts, and water and land pollution. In addition, we move towards the installation of electrical vehicle charging station at all three of our terminal properties, providing access to customers to charge their vehicles while waiting to board the ferries. Environmental considerations have also played a major part of the new administration building plan for Port of Basque that will consolidate administrative functions in a modern, accessible, inclusive, and environmentally friendly building, which is being designed to attain LEED certification. The building is tentatively scheduled to open in the 23-24 fiscal year. Environmental considerations also played a major role in the design of our new vessel as the vessel is designed with green ship technology focused on reducing our carbon footprint and reducing underwater radiant noise to lessen 
the impact on marine life. The vessel is scheduled to enter service in 2024. With the increased wind speeds during inclement weather events, we are moving towards improvements to Port of Basque Harbor. More specifically, the removal of Vardy's Island, which would enhance the safety of our operations. During the year, we gained ownership of the island and will continue to work towards the eventual removal of the island. These initiatives, combined with innovative approaches, are key to achieving our vision for the organization. We continue to promote greater efficiency, process improvement, and modernization as part of our innovation strategy. Key themes include understanding emerging trends, building a culture of innovation, modernizing our workplace and the customer's overall journey, and recognizing the importance and value of information and analytics. This will continue to be a focus of our activities in the years ahead. A major focus for Marine Atlantic is providing our customers with a reliable, efficient, and affordable ferry service. Through the challenges of the pandemic, our team focused on providing customers with a quality experience, from protecting health and safety to introducing new and upgraded amenities and processes, our customers remain at the forefront of everything we do. A highlight for the year was the introduction of a new entertainment system on the MV Blue Petits and MV Highlanders, providing live television and on-demand features, as well as future opportunities to provide capabilities on personal devices. We also launched a pet-friendly cabin pilot project to better understand customer expectations when traveling with pets and established a new dog park at the Port of Ass Terminal. Our Parks Canada partnership encouraged people to discover some of the great history and natural attractions at Grossmore National Park and the National Historic Sites of Lancel Meadows and Red Bay. Just prior to the end of the fiscal year, we launched a 22% spring discount campaign in partnership with the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. This pre-peak season discount was designed to increase overall visitation and tourism to the province as part of the 2022 Come Home Year activities. Our team focuses on planning so that we are ready for the unexpected. Last fall, a rain and windstorm resulted in the Trans-Canada Highway being impassable for a week on the southwest coast of Newfoundland. As an integral part of the supply chain for the province of Newfoundland and Labrador, as well as the link for the residents, we implemented our emergency response and contingency plans to ensure the supply chain remained open. By implementing a triangle route between North Sydney to Port Basque to Argentia, a first for our organization, we were able to transport products such as food, medical supplies, and fuel required throughout Newfoundland and Labrador including the isolated Southwest Coast region. The past two years have been challenging, but we have remained steadfast in our commitment to our customers and our service. Our success is a result of our employees, and I want to thank them for their ongoing hard work and dedication. In concluding, I encourage you to read our annual report for a much more detailed description of our fiscal year initiatives. Despite many of the challenges that have been faced over the past couple of years, there was a great sense of optimism amongst our customers and employees towards the future. Thank you for joining us today, and I look forward to providing additional updates about the exciting things happening at Marine Atlantic in the near future. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. I invite our Vice President of Finance to provide an overview of the past year's financial highlights. Thank you, Gary. 
I am pleased to be here today to provide an overview of Marine Atlantic's financial results for the fiscal year April 1, 2021 to March 31st, 2022. This marks the third fiscal year adversely impacted because of the COVID-19 pandemic. However, there were bright spots during the year. Pandemic restrictions lessened in 2021, particularly during the summer travel season, which resulted in the organization being able to resume the Argentia service and offer limited onboard food services. As a result, we experienced a 65% increase in passenger traffic volumes compared to the previous year. These increases resulted in higher than anticipated pasture numbers, but remain well below normal pasture numbers and revenues. Total revenues of approximately $105 million was 13 million higher than the previous fiscal year. Commercial traffic increased marginally by 1% year over year. Even though COVID-19 measures remain in place during the year, including passenger restrictions, there was greater flexibility for travel. This was especially noticeable during the summer season as there was significantly more demand for our service. In total, the organization collected $239 million. Approximately $108 million was generated in user pay plus ancillary revenues, and the Government of Canada provided a subsidy of approximately $131 million. Marine Atlantic does not make a profit and operates on a balanced budget approach. To that end, the funds to cover the costs of of providing the ferry service were a combination of revenue generated through user pay and subsidy from the Government of Canada. From an expense perspective, our primary budgeted expenditures for the year included employee wages and benefits, fuel, vessel charter costs, repairs and maintenance, materials, supplies, and services costs, and insurance, rent, and utilities. Fuel expenses were $12.9 million higher than the previous year, with oil prices being extremely volatile throughout the year. Last year, oil dropped to historic lows due to the pandemic. This year, price, prices escalated past pre-pandemic levels due to increased demand, supply chain challenges, and the escalating tension created by Russia's military invasion of Ukraine. The corporation's cost per liter for, fuel, for vessel fuel was 57% higher than last year. In addition, the organization burned a higher volume of fuel during the year due to the resumption of the Argentia service an increased number of trips on the golf service to meet traffic demand. Charter fees were $1.3 million lower than the previous year due to decreases in the daily charter rate for the MV Atlantic Vision. Labor costs were $12.3 million higher compared to the previous fiscal year. This was due to increased staffing complements to meet operational requirements related to greater numbers of passengers, resumption of the summer Argentia service, and food service on the vessels. Materials, supplies, and services costs were less than 1% higher compared to the previous year. While there were higher consumable consumable costs with increased passenger volumes, this was partially offset by lower software support costs. Repairs and maintenance expenses were $1.1 million higher than the previous year. The increase was mainly due to a shore-based initiative to remove obsolete dock structures. 
Insurance, rent, and utilities were $500,000 lower than last year as the corporation consumed less electricity to power ships in layup status as all four vessels <coughs> were in operation during the summer season. At year end, total expenditures for the organization were approximately $240 million. From a cost recovery perspective, the organization attained a cost recovery rate of 60% for the year. This fell short of the 65% cost recovery target set by the shareholder. For a further breakdown of our revenues and expenditures, we encourage you to review our full financial statements, which are outlined in greater detail in our annual report, available on our website at marineatlantic.ca. I would like to conclude by thanking our shareholder, the Government of Canada, for their continued support, the Board of Directors for their leadership and oversight, and all Marine Atlantic employees for their commitment and dedication in providing a safe and reliable service to the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. Thank you. Thank you to Murray, Sean, my board colleagues and all the staff at Marine Atlantic for their ongoing hard work and commitment. This past fiscal year presented successes and challenges, both personal and professional. Thank you to our employees, partners, and customers for their continued support to help us achieve our mission. We look forward to carrying this success into the future with us. Our latest annual report is available on our website for anybody who wishes to review our fiscal year activities in more detail. Again, Thank you for your interest in Marine Atlantic. We will now answer questions that have been submitted before and during the meeting via our website. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we do have some questions this morning from our viewers. The first one is, when will the new ship arrive and how will it be different from other ships in the fleet? Thank you for the question. Uh, the new ship, uh, will arrive in Canada uh, sometime in Q1, Q2, 2024. And the new ship will uh, be different than our current fleet uh, on a number of fronts. One, it will be more uh, fuel efficient. Uh, it will actually be more energy efficient. It will incorporate a number of green technologies as a part of our overall environmental management plan. It will also have more cabins, and we are, will be introducing uh, 42 berth pods on the vessel as well. Thank you. Uh, the next question actually came in a couple times, but it's uh, essentially the same one. Can you install more cabins and berths on your existing ferries? So I'll start uh, by talking about the new ship. The new ship will have 140 cabins and 40 pods. So when we look at the current fleet, we have to take into consideration the structure of the ship and a number of other factors. So at this point, we are looking into uh, what the realm of possibilities are. Uh, we understand that cabins are probably the, the most significant uh, commodity we have on board. Most passengers are looking for a place to sleep or a place to lay down uh, when they're traveling. So over the next 12 to 24 months, we are going to review our options and hopefully we will look at some type of solution uh, going forward. It might be pods, it might be cabins, or a combination thereof. So we are, we are looking at what our options going forward will be with the existing fleet. Thank you. The next one, what is Marine Atlantic doing to be an environmentally friendly company? Environmental friendly, so the, the, big, the big strategy or the big project we have on the go now is the development of our zero carbon by 2050 uh, plan. So we are uh, working behind the scenes to look at uh, the path to get us to zero carbon. However, we, we look at the environmental side of things every day when we do new projects or new initiatives. For example, we're looking at uh, renewing our fleet of shuttle buses. We're looking at electric buses. We're also looking at uh, a number of fuel efficiency initiatives uh, on our vessels as well as our vehicle fleet on shore. 
uh, electric vehicles take care of that. On ship, we're looking at new technologies to reduce fuel burn and also to reduce the emissions. So there, there are a number of things that we're doing from an environmental perspective, but everything we do, we take the environment uh, in, into account and we take it very serious and try to reduce as many of the greenhouse gases as we possibly can. So yeah, so we're continuously looking at ways to make more uh, efficient decisions as well as make more environmentally friendly decisions as well. Thank you. And the last question for this morning is, what is Marine Atlantic doing to keep operating cost at a minimum? So operating cost all comes down to how we run the business. Uh, so when we look at the number of vessels, we look at the schedule, we look at the fleet, uh, we look at that from an operating cost perspective. So we make decisions uh, that is in the best interest of customer service, but also in the best interest of efficiency and cost effectiveness. So we're always looking for ways to tweak the schedule. We're looking for ways to operate the fleet, to operate the business, and always looking for ways to improve processes, uh, systems, etc and try to run it as cost effectively as we can. And, and, and an example of that would be like things like auto mooring systems where auto mooring systems are safer, uh, they're more efficient uh, and, and give us a lot more flexibility when we operate, uh, operate the business. So we're always looking at ways to in, improve uh, the cost uh, of the business as the cost uh, of the business is improved, we see the, the better uh, and the better service that we can provide. So yeah, so we're always looking at ways to improve efficiency on board and on, on our terminals as well. Thank you very much. That's the end of questions, Mr. Chair.